Welcome to Passages. I'm Michael Kegel. We're going to talk about the book of Jonah, or as he is known in Hebrew, Yonah, which actually means dove. It's a beautiful name for a man. Interesting. And I have with me two wonderful guests, two great scholars and friends, Dodi Lee Hecht, who is a graduate, well, almost a graduate of Columbia University okay. in New York. Well, you're going to be a lawyer soon, right? And Rabbi Yechiel Goldreich, who is the rabbi of Bnei Torah in Toronto. So what do we have to say about uh, Yonah, other than comparing him to Pinocchio? Let's start um, Pinocchio. Comparative literary analysis, what do you think? Comparative to Pinocchio. Wow, boy. They're both in the whale. They're both in the whale, that's true, that's true. They're both uh, searching for their true selves in a certain way. Um, Running away also. Both, oh, that's true, they both run away. Yeah. Both run away. That's right. And they both have truth issues. Actually, uh, Yona's name himself, his, uh, his last name is mentioned, Ben Amitai, that the, which actually translates as the son of truth. So actually, truth is something which is quite central to who he is. Um, Yona, the uh, dove, which actually makes its appearance as well in uh, the beginning of Genesis after the Noah story, uh, where it hovers above the water, hovers above destruction. Yona himself, he's truth that's hovering above anything, uh, all of the nastiness of the impending doom of the city of Nineveh. There. That's good. <laughs> so not, which makes him diametrically opposite to Pinocchio, whose who's tragic flaw is that he lies. Right? right, that's the one the one point of but the total opposites. But yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to dwell on Pinocchio. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, no, no, no. We can dwell yeah. on Pinocchio. It's just it's the idea that you said about hovering above truth. But Yona strikes me as a very um, he ignores truth because a prophet seems to have like an inside scoop on truth, right? Because he's got God whispering in his ear. But but Yona almost doesn't want that. He walks away from it runs away from it. Well, well, the central question, as I see it, is how could Yonah run away from God? I mean, in order to make it, to be a prophet, you have to be a religious man in the first place. And right. something quite as basic as you can't run from God, would, hey, would, you'd figure he would have known something by that. I mean, that's something... So actually, uh, the, the commentaries explain that uh, the specific mission that Yonah was asked to do to tell the city of Nineveh to repent, that the city of Nineveh was actually um, it was made up of the enemies of the Jewish people. It would be similar to you getting a message from God, uh, go to Lebanon, speak to Nasrallah, tell him to run his organization more efficiently, <laughs> less corruption, because he needs to repent. It's not a necessarily a job for a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> right, but the thing is, I think, I think if I got that message, I mean, I don't want to compare myself to Yona, but theoretically, I think if I got the message to go speak to an enemy of the Jews, to, to, to tell him or her to repent, to me it would, be, it would be like the biggest sign from God that they're repentable. And who doesn't want to be involved in, you know, it's like bringing peace to the world. Who doesn't want to be the person who goes out there and helps the, the biggest enemies become better? Well, that's true. But in fact, the end of the story is that they repent long enough in order to attack Israel and take away 10 of the 12 tribes, which are lost till today. Um, so basically, <laughs> fixing them up, just having them run a, a more efficient organization, um, that's really... Uh, it's to our detriment. So why, right. why, why would God even ask him to do that? Why would he set him out on such a mission altogether? Well, at, at least now we can appreciate Yonah's hesitancy. <laughs> you're told by God you have to do what you, you, you know, you have to do what God told you to do. Right. But at the same time, it's against your own people. Um, and that, I think that's specifically Yonah's question as well. 
uh, to God, why would you send me to do something like this? So he probably wanted to die in the storm, in a way. I mean, if, if we say, and I know there's a whole idea that maybe, you know, you can kind of run away from God a little bit if you get out of Israel, but, but theoretically saying God is everywhere, his, he, he has influence everywhere, maybe the only way to escape him is, or the only way to escape his mission on earth is to get off of earth. So maybe the storm was like, Fiona was, please throw me overboard. <laughs> this, this is the, the surefire way. I'm not getting the call Monday morning to do this. Well, uh, actually, he, 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 you could see that he was quite passive because 